Morning guys. Um, just thought I'd do a bit of a live feed today. Hopefully the mic's working today. It looks like it is. Um, I'm trying OBS Studio for doing the recordings rather than direct, so it should be a bit smoother. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm preparing to go back to the UK next week. Uh, first thing I want to say on that is, isn't it good old... Uh, the government's wanted people to have the PCR test coming into the UK, um, but now are saying, ah, oh, we'll delay it till Monday. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so you were going to do it early, which means people have already spent money on PCR tests, etc. And then you go, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do it Monday now. This government is just such a joke. Um, it's, I don't think there's been a government this bad um, in my lifetime. Really, the, it's the dithering and the changing and the don't seem to have a clue what they're doing. It bothers me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not moaning about the PCR test because, to be to be perfectly blunt, I accepted the. I'm stuck with it, whether I like it or not. Um, so the point with that is, I simply just go, okay, fair enough. Go have a PCR test, that and that's that's it. Um, so with me, um, I have it with IMED, I M E D. Uh, it's 120 euros. They have different different versions. They have an express one. Um, on the website, it says they don't do Monday, Friday, but they're actually available Saturday and Sunday. It's a private clinic. Um, but I assume because of the changes with the government, etc., they're probably doing weekends as well. Um, because I think Monday, Friday is more to do with if you think you've got uh, COVID rather than you actually need one to travel. Um, so the testing is over the weekends as well. So bear in mind, if you book it online, you can still book a Saturday or Sunday appointment. And we have confirmed it with the clinic, uh, trying to get through them on the phone wasn't the easiest thing. I think it took April about two or three days. Um, cause they do this thing where they don't answer the phone, then I'll ring you back. But, um, it did say it seemed to take a while to get that sorted. Um, a few people have asked about the lockdown here in Spain. It's still regional. There was some talk of the parks today being closed in some areas, but I haven't had that confirmed anywhere. Um, you still can go to restaurants and bar facilities if they're open. There is, I think a lot of the shops are shutting at 5 o'clock now, but that also means some of them are opening earlier. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can stay all get out and about. You can still pretty much do most things you just wear your mask when you're out in the street etc don't get me wrong I, d I don't think it's necessary when you're walking on the street on your own um but to be fair what i see with most people is they just drop it onto the chin so don't don't be too bothered by it too much unless the guardian are driving past <laughs> um but it's been a good trip over to Spain. We've got, got the apartment downstairs nearly finished. Um, we've got a bit of a tidy up and I think I'll do an update video on that one uh, to show what it looks like now that it's complete. Um, that's sort of available from now um, because the, the painting's done. It's literally just a clean up um, and just get it ready for whoever wants to rent it out. Um, the location here is pretty good, um, even in this lockdown scenario. It's why the, the Spanish themselves come to the coast as soon as they, they heard there was a lockdown in Madrid, Barcelona, etc. They all escaped to their second homes, and this is why. Because... I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Uh, new setting on my phone I didn't set up. It's telling me that this live stream is actually live. Um, which, which is quite quite peculiar um, since I never set it up. But that's why it's shouting, I'm here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying. Yeah, so a lot of people escape to the coast. Um, your day-to-day -day lives are fairly normal here. One of the things that is hitting, to be fair, more than the COVID probably is in affecting things is probably the COVID. Uh, sorry, the Brexit. Schools are still open. Kids are at school all day. Um, so their school's functioning. Most of the government offices are functioning in some form. 
life goes on. But the Brexit thing is in, interfering with a multitude of things. Um, it does seem like Boris's team sort of woke up the day after Brexit and now going, right, guys, um, what do we have to do now? And they're all sitting looking at each other going, what do you mean? What's changed? As if there's been no thought process in any of this. Um, I was watching the people talk about the fishing and going, oh, well, the fishing could go back to the way it was 30 years ago. I don't think it ever will. I don't know. Progress never never works like that. It, it always means things are moving forward. So having a, say, a family of fishermen owning a fishing boat, it's going to be owned by a fishing fleet. And what country owns that fishing fleet in the sense of its corporate identity? They won't be a localized initiative um, that's for sure and then when you look at the I mean this morning they're on a, the, the Minister for Fisheries by the looks of it didn't even look at the paperwork she was at nativity play um, so that that was another thing that went on today um, I mean that was the Guardian I haven't read the full article um, but you're just thinking what have these people actually been doing? Why are we paying for these people? They just seem beyond incompetent. I mean, there's incompetence and then there's pure stupidity. Um, that's her job. Wasn't she even read the documents that relate to it? But it just seems to be one thing after another. And one of the things that is becoming something to be very careful of is if you're ordering on things like Amazon, if it's coming from the UK, there's some massive uh, import costs in there. Yeah, you'll get absolutely fleeced. Um, so what I do recommend is bringing it over on a flight. It may even be cheaper to book a return flight and go and pick some of this stuff up from some of the costs I've seen so far. Tino Tino, hi Matt. I would be super nice if you'd do a budget video about your expenses in Alicante. Uh, I follow real estate prices and I do least it, but I don't know if prices are going up or down, your opinion. At the minute, I would say some of the new stuff's actually gone down and some of the old stuff still sat there. Um, there's a three bedroom apartment we're looking at. This one I'm in now, which is, I think it's probably mid eighties build, similar size, but bear in mind the plumbing's, the original plumbing, the electric's original plumbing. Um, it's had a bit of modernization, but it's got a small balcony yeah, there's a new one, newly constructed in the last few years. Same same size, similar size, sorry. No, it's not actually. I think this one's 75 square meters. The other one's 120, 130 square meters. But it sounds a lot bigger than it is. But three, three of those areas, though, are external balconies. It's got three balconies. And they're the same price in the same town. So that's where it sort of gets a bit peculiar here. It's not like it's sort of benchmarked and it's easy to follow. Um, the prices here could be all over the place. Um, so this is actually smaller and has less balcony, outdoor space. Um, but it's three bedroom. Um, yeah, it's three beds. So it's a three bed to three beds. So you've got two three, three bedroom apartments. The other one's got nearly nearly twice as much square meterage. It's got massive wardrobe space in comparison to this one, and they're the same price. And that, that one's newly constructed um, and ready to move straight in. So it's never straightforward in Spain. Um, Glynar, hey, how are you doing? Uh, English lorries are having trouble send, sending food to Northern Ireland. Yep, they will do. It's not everything's been affected because they haven't set this stuff up. now. What gets me is they go, oh, you can't set it up before it happens. Of course you can. It's called contingencies. What you do is you run through multiple scenarios. I do this in business all the time. What happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? What happens if your IT system goes down? What happens if um, there's a new import-export tax? What is going to be implications? How does that affect the business and how do you work around it? It doesn't seem any of that has gone on. What we are seeing is the instant fleecing of the taxpayer. Um, I believe you have to have a permit to go into Kent. I haven't seen how much that's costing, but I doubt it's gonna be free. Um, so there's an extra cost that's instantly slapped on the top of anything moving through with the trucks. 
Then you've got the import export taxes that are now going to see things getting fleeced. So like, like I was saying earlier, if you order something off Amazon, do expect to pay import tax now coming into Spain. In the same of order, some from Spain into the UK or Germany into the UK or wherever, there's import taxes on this that weren't, weren't there before. Um, so that that's the positive sides of Brexit. Um, I've got to admit that this is where I have an issue with Brexit in the sense of there has been no output. It's all, we're taking our borders back, we're doing this, we're doing that. What, what does it look like? What have you produced? How is this going to be fixed? It's all like someone else is going to sort it out. Um, but it just seems to be absolutely ridiculous at the moment. But we'll see. It's going to take me at least three months to sort out some of this paperwork and about probably three years to sort out um, new trade deals. Uh, tingle Tingles, do you have to pay annual property tax in Spain? Yes, you do as a land owner. But as a tenant, you don't. Most tenants don't pay pay it. It's the owner of the properties. But the annual taxes on these for two to three beds is probably about 240 a year, um, which is nothing in comparison to the UK. Uh, what other expenses do we have here? How much is the waste collection? 27 every quarter. Yeah, so the bins getting collected is 27 euros every um quarter so every three months the 27 euros makes it a bit different to the old council tax in the uk the other thing being is they don't whinge if you put it in the wrong bin um because your your green bins are overfilled so you put some in the brown bin and it's oh it's can't compute um but yeah it's a different system here they don't have five people in a bin truck they, they might have one or two and then they crane them pick up the bin, tip it in the back of the truck and away they go. So they've got less resource used on the bin trucks as well, which is probably why it's more efficient because you're not dealing with all those um, extra taxes, extra holiday pay, extra sick pay, extra um, pensions and all that extra stuff um, because of the, the automation cut in a long time ago. Tingle Tingles, I presume there's a capital gains tax on selling. So it's purchased, keep forever. Exactly. I would, do not recommend selling property in Spain. Um, the tax on selling is quite heavy. But also, I think you get the tax relief if you're buying a bigger property. I'd have to double check. Um, but I'm sure if you're selling a smaller property to move to a big one, you don't pay it um, as, a, as a gains. Because it's not gains. It's gone into your, invested into the next property. But the best way to do it is actually buy it and just rent it out um, and we cover it that way um, because I think the tax is at least 20, 20, 40 percent, between 20 and 40 percent, I'm sure it is. But bear in mind, we're now going through this whole um, let's pay for COVID scenario. Uh, I know it's quite a negative video today, but it's, a, it's all the stuff that's currently feeding through on the media. Um, taxes are going to come go up in Spain, in the UK. But that may actually lead to more house sales in Spain. So that may be a positive um, if you're a buyer, not, not somebody who actually owns a property. Um, but I know in the Philippines, our land in the Philippines was for the annual tax was 600 pesos. It's now 3,000. Um, so that's a significant increase. Um, Financially, it's not, but it's the percentages. It's gone up multifold to cover these extra costs that have all been absolutely hammered left, right, and centre. So, uh, I mean, my personal view is it's worth sitting on everything for a couple of months. Um, it's going to be at least till March when things start to quieten down and we can get a bit of common sense. Because, like I said, even this PCR test nonsense didn't need it when I come out. Did need it um, to fly back. Then I go, oh, can we, we'll move it to Monday now. It's like, if you're doing something, stick to it. Don't keep changing it, you know. And this is the problem. Because now they can sort of complain in the UK. People don't listen anymore. I wonder why. I mean, I, I've got to admit, I don't watch the news at all. The only time I watch the news is, I've got to admit, I'm not a fan of Alex Belfield. He does, he's a voice of reason. Um, he does seem to have a chip on his shoulder, from multiple things um, but I, w I watch his channel because he has a moan about certain things and I can flip through and go okay oh 
I will, I'll have to look at the news today because there's actually a story in there that he's moaning about that may be worth, worth looking at. But you need those sort of um, canaries in there <laughs> that are having a moan about something to, to keep out the rubbish. Because um, uh, otherwise all you hear is COVID, 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 COVID. Not interested. Really not. Um, I was on a post yesterday on Facebook because this stuff appears whether you like it or not and somebody was on about the number of deaths and I said look I've worked for firms that make coffins I've worked for firms that made morgues every year we we ramp up for these seasons we put temporary morgues on the back of hospitals etc people aren't aware of this stuff a lot of stuff generally is hidden from the media when I was um, working up at a building in Birmingham we were part of this committee um, that was dealing with the mortality issues. I've got to turn that thing down. Yeah, we're having to deal with the uh, mortality issues and stuff in the area through knife crime and whatever. Um, so what you've got there is we, we had this committee and we've got... Chief of West Mercia Police, um, local community groups. We were from the business community. Uh, and it was like looking at how to solve some of the problems. And the police chief at the time actually said, you know, because we're having a conversation about, well, how bad is the crime? And it's like, well, most of it doesn't get reported. If you want to see what's really going on, just pop down A&E on a Friday night. And you'll see the number of shootings and stabbings that really go on. They're just not in the paper. They're not in the newspaper because they don't want to scare the Joe public. It also means if they're in the newspaper, guess what? The police love to actually do more to um, curtail the issue. So a lot of this stuff is already there. It's just that we don't look for it and we're not showing it. But unless there's an objective, whether it's selling PPE, selling a vaccine, whatever it is, that it a lot of this stuff is already in the background. It's just not in front of you every day. Um, Glint R, is it true that electric prices have doubled in the last year in Spain? Or I believe property, they, I think energy has gone up 30% in Spain. Um, but looking at the breakdown on costs from what we were watching on the news last week, a lot of that has been around um, portable gas because a lot of a lot more people are using more uh, gas this year, and uh, because they have a lot of um, like Cali gas um, for heating and cooking, so more people have been at home. So of course they're cooking more, which means they use more gas. So yeah, things have gone up, but not not that much. Thirty percent is, I believe, what was the figure they used. Um, across all energy, but the majority seem to have been on the gas side. Uh, yeah, hacks off, please. I suppose that's hats off, isn't it? Um, about an expenses video. Yeah, I'll have to cover the expenses. I mean, I've got to admit, with myself. It's been fairly constant, but I mean, I can pull out some of the electric bills, water bills and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of an update on that because obviously it's wrong time of year to be doing this. Because um, obviously it's been one of the coldest periods they've had for a while in Spain. Um, along with the fact that, well, the heating's been on permanently since I've been back. Um, so those issues will, I mean... It would take some bills. I know Peter and Anna's was about 130. One of their neighbours was 240. And I expect mine to be around 240 um, for a month. And the reason for that being is the heating's been permanently on. And it's all electric heating in our house. Um, the other locations, ours were a bit more insular. But um, Peter and Anna's, for example, is a steel over concrete. With those structures, they're not really good at absorbing and maintaining heat. So yeah, they will actually, that's why their bill is more expensive than they expected. 
if I bought a concrete over steel, one of the things I would actually do is look at taking the, the walls back and then putting an insulation board in, um, which are the ones that have got like that silver foil on the back and then redoing the walls um, and putting some insulation behind that as well, um, simply to give the building some decent insul insulation. It's also an ideal time to do all the cables and stuff at the same time. But we'll get to one of those projects once we eventually do a, do a purchase. <laughs> Uh, uh, Lao Liao, uh, as a potential immigrant to Spain, I followed your YouTube program for several years. Informative, helpful. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback. It's funny you say immigrant. I was talking to somebody this morning about the term immigrant because um, they were talking about the expats in the terms that was used by some of the Brexit Brexiteers. I don't know. They like being called Brexiteers or not. Um, but I was explaining the difference between um, expat, immigrant, and migrant. Um, because an expat is somebody who's left their country. So for me, I often use expat. For example, when I'm working in the Middle East, I, it's, I've left my home country, but I'm not a permanent settler in the Middle East. So I wouldn't call myself a immigrant to the Middle East. I may call myself a migrant, which then becomes an economic migrant because you move for money. Um, but this is the thing. It's often misinterpreted as if there's a separation by the use of the word expat to migrant or immigrant. But I think that was originally set up by the BBC and made a bit of an agenda for whatever reason. Um, personally, if we spend time in the Middle East, everyone's an expat who isn't a local. It's as simple as that. Um, and that's basically the terminology. It's not a degree of separation being, oh, you're British, we're expat. No, it just doesn't exist in the Middle East. Um, even in the Philippines, you're, Americans, French, German, whatever, are all expats. They, don't, they generally don't term themselves as immigrants. Although in that case, they could be either because they have left their home country and have settled in a new country. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those ones. I think some people like to stoke the fire with the use of the word, you know, go as if there's some hate in there. There's no hate in it. Uh, oh yeah, uh, hats off, please. Uh, has the internet in La Mata increased? Just watched an old video from you where you said it's five megabytes. It's currently a hundred, um, but I think I can get up to three hundred. It's it's all fiber optic now. Um, there is probably a possibility of up to 600 in some areas. I'm not sure ours is at that speed, but it's definitely um, a lot slicker. Um, Stephen Berth, hi mate, hope you're well. Had to jump in the car and thaw it. Uh, can't wait to get into the sun for a good night to see you, buddy. Yeah, not looking forward to thawing out the car from next week, but I've got a run round next week. A load of projects I've got to sign off, um, and then I'll probably be stuck with working from home well, my UK, um, I don't even know how to define it as, room, because I, I just rent a room, I don't rent a house and everything, I, I avoid council tax and all that sort of nonsense. Uh, but the the point being is, yeah, I'm not looking forward to the cold, not looking forward to being stuck in a small space either for long periods of time, but hey ho, it's uh, what we're stuck with at the moment. Uh, hope, hope work goes well, mate, today. Uh, tingles, tingles, even British retirees going to cheaper countries are really economic migrants. Exactly. And that, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. The, the debate happens as if there's some sort of imperial or um, days of old use on it. But the point is, the actual work, the interpretation by some is incorrect. But we shouldn't support it. It should actually just be corrected saying, well, it just meant you left your home country. <laughs> Cause, because once it's broken down in that that terminology it stops the uh, the um, the mentality that's often used from two sides one the superiority complex and other ones actually thinking everyone else uses it in the same term the the reality is it just means you left your home country that's it tracy bushnell hi matt last time i was in spain found the menu del dia really cheap what is it today are the bars open um menus of the day are still on um, I haven't got one right in front of me, but um, 
Yeah, Food Lion's got their menu of the day. They're, they're different, but the... I mean, the, the thing the menu del dia has always been for the, the working Spanish. That's where it originally was sort of set up. That's why it's reasonably priced. It's because a lot of Spaniards are out and about. They would, they'd have their main lunch out and about. Because uh, obviously the Spanish eat out a lot more than we do in the UK uh, during the day. Um, I wouldn't say they have as many takeaways as we do in the UK. Um, but... They definitely eat out and socialise a lot more in social environments uh, compared to the um, the UK. But um, yeah, I know seeing old Alex Belford having a moan about the Marks and Spencers removing the wine from the meal deal. Um, I, although that may be political, I do think some of this would actually be his phone's going mad today. I think some of that may actually be to do with the import-export stuff as well around Brexit. So I can't really grumble at it. I mean, a meal deal, I think it was 10 quid or 12 quid. Um, I can't really grumble at that sort of stuff because, let's be honest, Marks and Spencer's are going to get absolutely hammered with Brexit until it actually settles down the same as every other business. Although I would say probably more so because they have a lot more fresh produce. Um, and yes, the bars are still open. Um, but there aren't many bars in La Mata on this end. Um, it's mainly restaurants. But I think everywhere shuts at five o'clock at the minute because they've had a rise in cases. Um, but you can still get out and about. What's happening, a lot of places have actually opened earlier. Um, and close at five, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. There is a, there is a bar open. I was trying to think there because there isn't many bars this side of town. So, but the the one next to Food Line is open. So yeah, the bars are open. Uh, Stephen Berth, I shouldn't complain. Main thing is I'm still working. It's going great. Been out since eight already. Uh, doing good today. As the camper fell through, it needed about two thousand spend on it. So I swear with that one. Yeah, campers um, are expensive. <laughs> they always are. Um, recommend just looking for a van and look at just upgrading it yourself because um, you can get the templates fairly easy and. You're fairly handy around the toolkit, so you're probably better off just uh, fitting it out yourself. Um, that's what I'd recommend. You buy a van. Cutting a window out may seem a bit daunting, but it's not too it's not too difficult. Measure once, cut. Well, sorry, measure <laughs> measure twice, cut once. Not measure not measure twice. Uh, not measure once, cut twice. No, uh, but as long as you've got it cut correctly. It ain't a problem, and if you're not, if you're not a hundred percent, get someone else to cut it for you. Um, but the majority of the stuff in there, you could fit out yourself pretty easy. Paperwork isn't as bad as people make out, um, so it could be a little project in there. Uh, Tracy Busnell also may ask if if Spanish, if Spanish gold is the same value carat wise as UK. I have some earrings I bought there. Um, they're done on the international market, so. It's like the Middle East. When you actually buy jewellery, they, they'll actually put the the rate of the gold and do a calculation on the weight of the item you're buying. So there's two things here. Firstly, the value of the jewellery by its design, then the gold. Because a lot of the time in the UK, it's based on... I mean, unless you're selling it as a scrap value, then the market values will be rated at whatever that um, location is giving you. But you can actually find, for example, if you buy in the Middle East, that if you try to sell something in the UK, it's actually gone up in value because you bought it near the value of the actual weight of the gold. So it depends where you sell it and what you, you know, whether you sell it as a jewelry piece or as a piece of gold. And that, that, that that's basically the gold market. Um, Stephen Berth, back to it, mate. Have a good day. You too, mate. Take it easy. Lao Lao, do you believe more British will be expats to Spain in the future? I think we're going to be sitting on a bit of a lull for six months um, because January, February, March, COVID situation, then you'll suddenly get the people starting to see what changes are actually really occurring with Brexit. Because you've got to bear in mind, a lot of the stuff we're looking at at the moment that people complain about is 
a lack of engagement around solutions. It, it's literally gone back to the same sort of uh, setup that the UK has got with, um, let's just say, America, because in the same that Spain has got with America. The, the international ones with no agreements in place, so it's sort of gone to, well, let's go back to the basics and work from there. And this is why there's a lot of complaining going on because a lot of this stuff, although the engagements couldn't have gone on earlier, um, all these scenarios could have been put together and so that you could push them forward quite fast. So you're going, right, they won't give us fishing rights because of this. Okay, what's the other options here? Right, if we do this, will you do that? And you just go, right, backwards and forwards very quickly to go let's come to some sensible agreements on this stuff as fast as possible um so i do think spain will actually be looking at changing the 90 um 90 day thing uh 90 day visa simply because it doesn't suit their economy they don't want the brits moving away from the coast um so i do see that changing and i do see the challenges around the medical side being looked at as well for people coming in um so that you've got full access in future retirements um in the same way the nhs is relying on spanish medical staff so they don't want to make that too difficult either so it it'll be a mess for that for at least six months but i do think you'll actually see a continuation of the market you will see some changes this year with tax rates tax is going to shoot up what that'll look like in the UK and Spain, no idea at the minute. Um, but I do think that will affect the housing markets on both sides of the waters. Um, with the positive output, if you're looking at long term, that the prices are going to drop or should drop, and that's a good buy-in time. But you may be stuck with the 90-day visa nonsense for some time until they start having settlement visas and other bits and pieces, which will be carved out over time um because it is all this stuff takes absolutely ages i mean the last thing you really want is bureaucrats dealing with anything and now we've just given them a, a five years worth of work that they're going to sit on and take their take them up to their pension age um they're loving it um hacks off i found rentals on facebook so cheaper than on idealista yes they can be um, some of that will be because they're private, so there's no taxes paid on some of them. Um, they're also, a lot of them are not doing the um, short-term rentals, maybe private on there. Um, with Idealista and Airbnb, they'll have certificates, but on Facebook, I think some of them are getting away with not putting them up for tax. To be fair, the amount of money generated on some of these things, I'm not a fan of it being taxed in the first place because they're all fairly low priced. And if you have a bad tenant, you can wipe out a year's uh, worth of income easily anyway. So I do think that's a bit... I think taxing a block of buildings, fine. But if you've got one apartment or whatever, I, d I think just lead people to it. Uh, Tracy Bushnell, thank you, Matt. Found this by chance. I used to live near Alicante for nine years. Was married in the days of the good old peseta when the menu del dia was 500 pesetas yeah i think it's it's probably about six to ten euros now but it does include a meal probably a bowl of soup and a glass of wine or a sangria um but yeah i mean it's good value uh, but i've got to admit when i eat out i normally like to spend so it's i mean like yesterday we had the old uh, cordon bleu down at food line really good food down there um so, like today, it's KFC Fridays, Fried Chicken Friday. So, later on, we'll disappear, go and get all the food, wait for the school bus, and then we'll, we'll have a Chicken Friday with the kids. Um, and tomorrow we're off bowling, because um, obviously I'm going back to work Monday. So, going to spend a few days uh, doing some uh, family time. And I think this is one of the things that is often completely sidestepped with the... COVID situation with the lockdowns, not lockdown, don't know what day it is, is there's lots of people like myself that um, basically are kept away from family for months um, because we're in two countries. I mean, I can, I mean, businesses must be really feeling the pinch, which is why I sort of 
have complained because I've managed to get home a couple of times, well, three times now during this COVID scenario, um, where some people are look, must be on their knees business-wise, um, and some people may not have been able to get home at all. Um, so I don't grumble, I just move on. But at the same time, I do think they should actually think about people beyond holiday makers to Spain um, because not everybody's a tourist. Um, Glint, our Brexit's a good way to raise tax with all the import export duty, general public loss out when less choice and increased price. Of course it is. You're right, you're 100%. Do, do you know what's really hard to say to people? That is that is exactly it. When has a government department ever said they have too much money? Never. Decrease my budget. I've, I don't need it this year. Never. What you'll have is an increase in tax. They'll say, right, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to put X amount of people to work um, to cover all this extra paperwork, all this bureauc bureaucracy, blah, blah, blah. Taxes are going to go up. At the same time, a lot of this paperwork and stuff was already in place. It was just under different forms, different, you know, so there's people already there. It's a bit like the getting rid of the MPs from the EU. Um, there will be more MPs and bureaucratic people around to interface with each one of those MPs in Europe. So we haven't lost anybody. We've actually increased our staff and they do it every time. Um, and that's the bit that people struggle to get that message across. Anytime the government makes a decision, it's never to our benefit. Furlough scheme, fantastic idea. We're going to tax to death on it next. Oh, mortgage uh, delay scheme. I call it a mortgage delay scheme because it wasn't a mortgage holiday because you are going to still go and have to pay it. Um, that's just going to create a problem in the housing bubble because when they all come to fruition at once, there may be a massive problem because if people have lost their jobs, managed to have a delay on their mortgage, etc., Guess what? Everyone's going to hit the uh, kick out your front door scenario around the same time, which could actually create a crash in the market, in my personal opinion. Um, Live Tech Pilot. Morning, Matt, from Stephen Frenchy. Hey, how are you doing? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've got to admit, I think we've got to just uh, batten the hatches down for the next few months, focus on stuff that we can do and not worry about the stuff we can't do um i'm not going to be buying extra fish in the uk just to support the the uk economy i've got to be honest <laughs> I, i'm fish once a month enough for me i'm not going to start buying a cod a day to to keep the market moving um because let's be honest the the majority is on fishing fleets anyway and i have no idea who owns the fishing fleets um no doubt most people don't either Because then you go, oh, it's the Scottish fisheries or whatever. And you go, okay, well, who owns the ships? Oh, the French. It's under, you know... I mean, the company I work for, for example. It's a British company, but our, our, we're, a, a, um, we're under another company that's French, uh, Spanish. We're under a Spanish firm. And other companies are exactly the same. It's like the nuclear power plants. Built by the French, funded by the Chinese, and paid for by the taxpayer. Um, it's not so cut and dry and that's why I found some of the stuff around going back 30, 40 years to a time where the UK was still coming out of its empire days and still living off some of the cash generation of there and um, those days are gone whether we like it or not you know the UK's economy is not been evolving um, it's often living on the past so, so the point is that is not going to help us in any form to think that way because unless you're injecting new technology, um, finding ways to actually change the country, don't look to the past. The past will never occur again. Um, a lot of people, you know, when we're talking about in the Philippines, you get a lot of ex-Marines, etc. They're divorced or had some bad times in the US, etc. They go over to the Philippines because guess what? That's when they had the R and R. That's when the end of World War Two, the end of um, for the Vietnam War and stuff. And they were recovering in the Philippines, so that took them back to a happier time. But the whole place has changed, you know. But at the same time, 
a lot of them are happier there than they were back in their home countries. But the point being is, it is not the same as it was when they were there as a, a GI, etc. It's it's just not the same place. And the same as, like I say, going back to the fishing 34 years ago, it's not the same. I mean, for a start, there's a lot more fishing farms and stuff that were around today. Um, we eat less fish. The national disc, dish, I believe, is still curry. It's no longer the cod and chips. Um, so there's all these sort of things. What we should actually be focused on is positive changes, which is invest in technology, um, invest in things that are going to bring us the next next tech because the next tech is your next boom the the old stuff it ain't there it, it's it exists it's like the british steel or whatever it's they're old industries that can be beaten by other countries they can do it cheaper I don't mean this is good but they can do it cheaper um so you've got to think out of the box and going high tech is one of those ways forward. I mean, this is why you look at Elon Musk, you look at uh, Bezos from Amazon, they're looking at Mars. They're, they're thinking out of the box completely. Um, I'll just finish my coffee and I'll carry on. Well, the uh, Tracy Bushnell, well, the fruit and the veg contained in Tesco yesterday, empty, lots of sprouts and parsnips, though. Not sure if the lorries are getting through. I chop everything we everything we got left and freeze it. Always good for pizza. Yeah, I've got to admit, it probably is. It's probably the trucks ain't getting through. Um, I haven't spoken to any of my truck driver friends here, but they, they deliver for Morrison's, Sainsbury's, and I think Tesco's. They 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 bring the uh, the antichokes, the lettuce, um, and other fresh produce produce from here. So I'll, I, next time I see one, I'll ask them what, what problems are getting going into the UK. Because obviously we're hearing all the stuff going out of the UK. Um, but it's got to be going both ways. Because it's very easy for the media to blame the EU as if France isn't letting the trucks in. But the other side is going to have exactly the same problem. Because all this new paperwork is now being put in by both sides. Um, it's gone back to default, which is like I said, it'll be the same sort of paperwork that's set up for import exports with America and whatever because we haven't gone um, through a process of agreeing new rates with everybody yet um, but hey ho <laughs> it keeps it interesting uh, E. Bogdan I've seen the government UK is working to change the workers rights oh they will do because we, we've lost all the EU rights don't you worry that we, we'll be worse off on that one um, I mean, I've seen one yesterday where the there's a guy that owns a plumbing firm that's trying to make it compulsory in these contracts that you must take the vaccine uh, for COVID, which for me just has alarm bells ringing. Um, might as well just barcode us and, and just say you're owned by the firm. You're no longer a human being, uh, in my personal opinion. When you get to that level, he owns you. You're nothing more than just scum to him, as far as I can, in my personal personal thoughts. I mean, I can understand he's an older gentleman, um, and his only thoughts are what suits himself. Um, but I just find that completely disgusting. Um, removing the rights of choice from somebody is just wrong. Um, Michael Ling, have to go. Thanks for the insights. Keep up the good work. Thanks, mate. Have a good day. Spiritual Gifts Ireland. I'm in Ireland. I sell on ETSY online. It's a platform for crafters and handmakers. Um, UK buyers are charged a tax now. A man bought something from me for 12 euros. He was charged almost four. Um, you want to try it from America? I've seen some handcrafted stuff, which is like a little figurine like this, which cost about $30. There was £86 tax on that in the UK. The the post office blocked it and they just stuck that on there you go 86 or don't have it um that's what we're that's what's happened now it's not doing anybody any favors at all uh this tax came into place on the 1st of january etsy collect it on behalf of the uk government yeah it's it this this is the price of freedom <laughs> so i'm told 
I phoned the man and told him he didn't realise as it was added at the very last minute before he put his card details. Yeah, it's... I mean, I, I tried to order a router and I'm glad I cancelled it now because it was coming... I think it was coming from the UK because um, normally in Spain I, or even the UK I normally get a delivery date straight after the I placed the order. After four days, I still had no... It hadn't even been posted yet. Um... I've only had that in the UK. The other one that did that to me was Doc Martins, but I was actually... I mean, the fr frustrating thing with Doc Martins, they told me it took them a week to actually post it. I'm only 16 miles away. I could have just gone and picked the bloody things up. Um, but but the point is, it just didn't go anywhere. And I think that's where they were starting to gauge the extra taxes. So I cancelled it, and I'll get one when I'm in the UK and bring it with me next time. Um, but hey-ho, this is... This is this is a step backwards. There's no other, no other explanation for it. It's a step backwards. The UK has now made itself an island. It's um, Fort UK. Uh, yeah, wow, it's crazy, Matt. Yeah, I agree. I, I, for me, I just don't... It's not logical. Um, because even with taking the borders back, what does that actually mean? You know... We take, regain control of our country. Right. I want to put this in perspective for me. Because I did have this contra uh, con conversation with somebody last week. Or was it this week? It was, it was actually on Monday. Um, so, what you have here, right, is you say, right, well, the UK democracy. There is no democracy in the UK. Let, let, in the simple terms, it's red or blue. Now... If I put it in another perspective, I can either step in dog poo with my left foot or step in dog poo with my right foot. But I, I, my choice is I don't want to step in it at all. I don't call that democracy. Um, democracy, should, for me, should have other additional things. First one is it, you can actually vote to not have a politician. So you can actually vote of no confidence and, the, and none of the above. So you can actually remove people from being your representative because that might actually force people to that are actually noteworthy to actually do their job um, but also if that vote is higher than the votes for somebody they don't get the seat you know if that if that's higher than uh, say somebody got 25% of the vote and 40% of the vote actually says we don't want anybody um, that they don't want anybody vote should actually prevent them getting into office second one is we should have the ability to actually remove people so if you're, if for example you're not happy with Boris, there should be a, a motion after a period of time that can actually trigger the removal of somebody not fit for purpose. Um, we don't seem to have that. In the same way, if I wanted to run for government, I couldn't make any difference because we're pretty much in a two-party system, same as the US. Because you can't have enough power and influence to change anything. You would need about 400 people that had a similar mindset to create a third party. This is why even with people that are uh, pro Farage, for example, he could only go so far because he couldn't gain enough, enough um, trust from the general community and population to get to a position of taking control of the, the state. Um, so the point being is, for me, it does not represent the nation properly because a lot of the time we're seeing career politicians. We're not seeing people with any work experience, real world knowledge, etc. Um, which is where it's just not democracy, uh, in my personal opinion. And it, this is why I, I do think there's some major problems out there. Um, it's a bit like the US situation. I think a lot of this is people are starting to boil over for long-term stagnation and seeing a lot of the problems have not been resolved over a period of time and it's just getting worse if people feel like they're not being listened to um i do think in six months the uk is going to have some people boiling over um because they've lost their jobs lost their house um and obviously this whole new tax system and everything is going to increase costs because surely it's going to hit some of the uh, production um, and manufacturing in the UK which we haven't really seen yet when I mean, we talk about fisheries 
But what about anything that's actually um, car manufacturing? I mean, I, I know some of them have stockpiled in the Euro in Europe, but have some of them moved production? Because I believe the EU have a deal with Japan, for example, for zero zero tariffs between Japanese and EU cars, which means I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like Bentley decides to move operations to Europe because of its major exporter, same with Land Rover, is Japan or in other markets outside of the UK. You, financially, it makes more sense to actually move productivity. Um, but that's my opinion. Um, Tracy Bushnell, Stuart from Spain Speaks covered a news feed that said a Spanish pensioner in a care home was vaccinated against her daughter's wishes. We're going to lose all free will and rights. It, it, it's really strange at the moment because, like I said, the guy that from the plumbing is saying, right, you've got to work for me, um, you've got to be vaccinated. Um, that's not That shouldn't be up to him. I mean, because for me, I have little information on this vaccine. And the evidence that relates to things like... Um, let's just say, issues around childbirth, sterilization. I don't think we've had enough research done um, that could uh, could influence things like birth defects and things like that. I don't think we've had enough information. So, A, what's going to happen in seven, eight months' time when some of these... Um, things may come to light. I'm not saying they will come to light. I just say there's a lack of information, real information that I can trust to actually say what that vaccine actually looks like. And is it really safe? I, I'll tell you now, I don't trust the word Boris says. Um, he can't even make his mind up in most days. He, he U-turns, U-turns more than they, um, well, I was gonna say um, Theresa May, I don't think she actually U-turned that much. I just think that, I mean, they used to call her the submarine, I believe, because at the time there was decision making, she'd duck her head down and try and avoid it. Um, yeah, D Glyn R, does this vaccine include a microchip? Well, who knows? We don't. We don't know. I mean, I know the PDR tests. You may be getting your um, DNA collected. I have no idea if they're doing that or not. But the point is, it's possible. And, it, and this is the problem they've created um, with the media, um, is the, the trust is gone. And that, that's when you've got a problem. If people do not trust something, why would you risk your life and the risk of your family for it? Well, the answer is you don't. But what you get is, well, if you don't have the vaccine, you're not coming into our bank. I believe HSBC says if you put their uh, staff at risk, then... They'll, they'll look at closing your accounts. Um, now, I can understand that we're wearing a mask if that's their business stance. Because if I'm going into their office, then they're saying wear a mask, then that's fine. Because I, I can choose not to bank with them. I can choose not to be their customer. And they can choose me not to be their customer as well. That's fine. But when you start getting dictated to around things that are life-changing like a vaccine that's when it gets into a whole new ball game because it's not a case of just dropping into a um i'll popping into the bank i'll just have a vaccine and then i'll take it out when i leave it's a permanent thing uh e bogdan the pfizer vaccine is still in the testing process officially till 2023 and the moderna vaccine is on the testing process till 2022 they currently have some sort of temporary approval Exactly. I'm not being funny. Would you drop on a um, jump on a temp temporarily approved uh, plane? You know, it might work, might not. But if you well, jump on one of Elon Musk's uh, rockets that the test firing. Um, they, we know we're going to lose some guys, but just hop in, see how you get on. You might be lucky. Um. The answer is no. You'd have to be mad. But the way this is being orchestrated and pushed is like you have no choice. Because again, oh, it's not compulsory. 
but we want to be doing it 24-7 as soon as possible. I believe that's what Boris said. Um, it's not compulsory, but you got a plumbing guy that I think... He, if he's not wearing a wig, I'd be shocked. Um, but I would say he's in his uh, older age. I'd probably say 70. Um, of course, he's worried about the bloody vaccine. Myself, I'd rather let my immune system take his chances. Um... So, it's all that, well, you don't have to have it, but we'll make your life unbearable if you don't. I'm waiting for the flag wavers to say, well, if you don't have it, you're uh, you're unpatriotic. Is that the next one? You can't get people to stand in the cinema for the national anthem anymore, but hey-ho, you, if you don't take a vaccine, you're not unpatriotic. Um, he bogged, in, bogged down, and based on the info which is official, I don't understand how they can impose this. It's at last morally wrong. It's yeah. I mean, it's not only morally wrong. It's a lot of the freedoms that we have were not given freely. Um, if you look at the World War One, the end of World War One and um, World War Two, how many changes occurred um, because of the sacrifices people made. They weren't given freely. They come on the blood of others. If you look at World War One and the well, let's just say World War Two, because it's it's easier to pull it. The whole picket fence scenario um, was, I mean, from my personal opinion and stuff I've read, was to avoid the Americans having the ability to raise an army against the Amer the American nation. So the point is. How do you stop people being suppress suppressive? Uh, sorry, how do you suppress people that may become an army? Simple answer: you keep them busy. So you start the the white picket fence scenario, the small house, keep people occupied, give them the American dream, and you keep people focused on trivial stuff. Look at the rise of the garden centres and all that stuff in the UK and everywhere else. It's to keep people occupied away from politics. Now, what we've got at the moment is the focus has moved to specific politics. We're not debating whether Boris is good or bad or incompetent. We're debating whether we should have this vaccine or not. Um, because the government and more and more people are forcing it upon us in a very manipulative way. Whether we like it or not, it's pure manipulation. Um... So the point being is that's that's the scenario has changed because the average person where you would used to go to a pub and you could have these groups that would moan and protest and riot etc that's been broken down over years the social housing was dismantled um in the uk if you were in a council house the rules over a council house to a housing association are different councils have to house you Housing associations don't. So you can be evicted much easier from housing association for non-payment. So like the um, the miners' strikes, etc., it was much easier with people in council houses than it would be if they were in housing associations. Because if they were in housing association houses, it's very likely the miners' strikes may not have even happened. That's the that's the reality. This, this is why all these things have changed. There's little tweaks to day-to-day -to -day life that often people don't see. But it's why they're done. You're removing a specific right of protest. If you're worried about your rent, your mortgage, all this sort of stuff, you're less likely to protest. Um, where if you're... Let's get on some of the Brexit stuff. If you're 68... Retired in Spain and still voting to leave the UK, you ain't bothered. You, you're well. I'm patriotic to the flag and patriotic to my country. Don't live there. Got very little uh, connection with it anymore. But I want it to go back when it, when I was a lad. Those sort of connections are very peculiar. But that's the reality. Some people are like that. They're. It's not going to impact them. They're not sitting there thinking they're going to have their own rights removed. But this is how you can manipulate people because you can focus things that can sway people's decision making very easily now thanks to technology.
Uh, council house tenants have to have a vaccine. Is that next? Um, no, I don't see that coming. But what you will actually probably find is they'll just keep the pressure on. What you'll find is, I mean, I do want to stress this is my personal opinion. What, what I do think is likely to happen is they'll push for the NHS workers to be 100% um, what do you call it vaccinated and then the next one on the top of that will be government services workers then the next one is the contractors on the back of those um, so I would estimate that's probably four million people in work at working age uh, probably higher and then like myself because i work in the government sector although i'm not government then the contractors are then forced down to follow the same paperwork and then my contractors are then forced down from me that's the way i can see them pushing it i can't get on a plane without one that may come from the airlines because the other stuff goes on in the background there could be extra scrutiny that you've got to have the pcr test blah 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 but the pcr test isn't going to go anywhere and the reason for that is the vaccines are not 100%. So even if you had the vaccine, doesn't mean you can't carry COVID, doesn't mean you can't spread it and you haven't got it. It just means you've had a vaccine. Because at 70% efficiency, there's already been news articles out where people have actually caught COVID. Which sort of makes the whole thing a complete farce. Because if you said to me it's 100% efficient, I'm not planning on having any more kids. Um, we're quite happy as we are. If we do have any more kids, we'll probably adopt a couple. Um, but reality is, as long as it doesn't shut my immune system down or something like that, I wouldn't be too too worried about it myself. But definitely don't want my kids having it in the current state of play. Um, I want to make sure my kids are safe. But as a parent, that's, that's my view on it. Um, but... I do see them sort of whittling away at it. It's not it's not compulsory, but if you want to work for us, we do recommend you have it because it may affect your contract ability to tender on other contracts. Um, that sort of thing goes on. It's the same with it. If you read the article on the BBC about that guy with the plumbing company, he's like, oh, we're not forcing people to do it. We're just reviewing our contracts. But of course, he'll be, well, I'm not employing you if you don't have it. I mean, that that's the long and short of it, in my personal opinion. E. Bogdan, any chance the price for houses will drop in Spain? I've got some savings being thinking to buy some small in Spain. I think we've got that in about six months' time, to be fair. Um, the mortgage holidays, the people losing their jobs. We've just seen, I, I think there's a double-dip recession predicted. I don't know what they call it, double-dip. It won't be a double-dip. It'll be one long recession. Um, yes, the UK is going to hit. As soon as the UK hits, the UK market, uh, the Spanish housing market will hit at the same time because anybody, people will be trying to um, liquidate as much as they can if they need to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do expect there will be some drops in the housing markets, UK and Spain. Um, well, glo let's be honest, globally. Because everyone's taking a hit. As I was saying earlier, my um, annual tax in Spain in the Philippines has gone up from 600 pesos to 3,000. Um, so realistically, I expect some taxes to go up. Taxes go up, some people will be selling off. Um, but one of the things that does keep people into the market here is quite simply that there is taxes when you sell a property that sometimes... You may think, I might as well just hold on to it. But I do think we're going to see some price drops. One way or the other, prices will come down. Um, how much is the big question? No idea. Because if it's a, it's a really bad recession, they'll crash. If it's a case of uh, the banks want to prop it up, they'll just keep their properties they own as they do now. There's a lot of properties in negative equity the bank's sitting on. Um they are not going to release those to market en masse when they can sit and hold them um, and wait for better times. Um, but what you might find is developers may actually try and sell them, sell some on cheaper. You'll get people trying to liquidate property um, for money to pay off mortgages in the UK or something. If the interest rates suddenly start jumping up, which is another reason that could um, influence uh, a bit of a panic in the markets. Um, there's a lot of things at play at the moment. 
but what we've got at the moment where we extend debt which is the mortgage um, relief scheme and all that sort of stuff it's very hard to predict because look, look what we get with Boris he can't even decide what day he's bringing in the PCR test um, for travelling back from, from Spain to the UK it was supposed to be from today it's now Monday uh, CIBI 968 morning Matt morning mate hope, hope your day's going well um, but anyway guys I'll just sort of do a catch up today I've, I've gone on a bit of a uh, political debate side <laughs> I hadn't planned on that but um, I do think it's more a case of we just need to sit and see where things play out in the next three months because they carry on with this Covid stuff and um, after three months this is going to drag on for another year if it suddenly starts to uh, drop off then we know we're, we're in a better position um, but the recession will cut in after that, which is, like you say, a good time to buy. Tracy Bushnell, are you single, Bogdan? <laughs> I miss my spend, yeah. <laughs> well, first time the channel's been used for dating. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of my day. I've uh, got a bit of shopping to do. Uh, take it easy and have a great day. Thanks for watching. And please, thumbs up and share. If you Share, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I do appreciate the conversations we have and the comments as well as supporting the channel. Um, wouldn't be here without you. All right, thanks for watching.